Yeah. But the old crossroads from where our shop was. Aye. Was Jack Seddon's. Jack Seddon's, yeah. That was yeah. Well, I can remember. Back in the home shop. Yeah. And then when you went round the corner, mm. Teddy Wells. Teddy Wells. Old Teddy Wells. Yeah. I always remember. Like my father, he got hurt at the mill, so he had to pack up. Yeah. And uh, my grandma was at this little toffee shop, but he used to have the agent for Sunday newspapers. Yeah. And then eventually he bought the corner shop where I had. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, old Teddy Wells, there used to be a traveller from Southport called Ingham, Mr. Ingham. He was the, one of the directors of White Hudson's toffee firm. Mm -hmm. And he knew, old Teddy Wells knew that. Mr. Ingham was coming on the Tuesday, every other Tuesday. And my father was strong labour. Right? <laughs> if you was a workman them days, you was labouring. He was labouring. And, uh, of course, I think, when I think back, nearly all the, on my father's side were labour. I, I, I think about uh, lots of the family were, were labour. Yeah, well, you said your dad worked at Enska's Mill. Yeah. And, and how long was he at the mill for? Oh, I don't know. From, from when he was a youngster? Yeah, a youngster, like. But he got hurt and they had to pack up. Mm -hmm. Bought a newspaper round off a chap called Dick Saul. He lived down Mark Lane. Yeah. And he went round uh, Scaresbury. Well, when he had to pack up work, he had the Sunday newspaper business, like. They all had to buy the papers off him. Because he, he was the agent. No, he was the agent for the Then they, you know, they couldn't get anybody to buy papers no. on Sunday. It was, it was like taboo. You, you didn't have a Sunday newspaper. No, it was it was again. Well, there was Sunday paper. Yeah, but, but nobody bought them. No, the religion, against him, the religion. The religion. Wow. And they wanted an agent, and my father took it on. Yeah. And when I sold the shop, yeah. I still had the agency. The day I sold the shop, the agency was taken off them. Was it? Because there was very few ad agencies like it. No. Because you were getting the papers the same price as the biggest wholesaler in the country. Ah. Oh. I can tell you how much they were. There were two nine pence acquired. Two, how many in acquired? Twenty-six. Twenty-six newspapers yeah. for two and nine pence. Yes. And you told them at two pence apiece. Twenty-six. And there was more in the newspapers them days than what there is now. Yeah, and uh, you sold them a choir, like they used to sell Ronnie Walton and these shop, trap up Burska Town, the telly shop. Yeah. And you used to get three and three a choir from you. You got sixpence for it, like old sales. For wholesaling them on to yeah. Ronnie Walton. Uh, them days, you know, he, he had to buy them through you. Yeah, he couldn't buy them anywhere. Uh, chap up Burska Town had to buy them. He was the same. Yeah. I don't know if you was remember. that McFarlane's? No. No, it was a grocery shop. Do you one, remember it? the one by Per Tree Cafe? Oh, yes, yeah. A chap there took it on. Oh. And he started to tell newspapers, and he had to. Green. Was it Green? Yeah, Bob Green. Ah, it is. A bit of a, a little cafe in the yeah. side, didn't he? And, uh, when I know chaps used to tell me, I always remember Kenny Lingard saying one day, he said, you go there and you want a pack of the cigarettes like you're dashing it. And he was taking silver, t uh, not cellophane paper, like, giving them in, opening it. <laughs> and you wanted to get off. Oh, he was a, he was a right character. I know Peggy, do you remember Peggy working for me? Peggy Watkinson. Aye. Oh, yeah. Uh, Peggy had... When the papers came on the Sunday morning, my, we'd be putting them out for the lads, and the, it's been put on the pile. And Barney, do you remember Barney Derbyshire? Oh, yeah, I went to school with Barney. And the Barney, <laughs> he was a good lad, didn't he? And the, Aye, good lad with a lot of and, people, and Barney was. He used to, uh, had a little van, and he used to run papers up, and, uh, and he'd say, um, the papers, they'd bring up this chap from Burska I can't think his name. Uh, I haven't received the papers yet. And I said, Peggy, uh, oh, it'll be that young fella, just tell him it's on. She used to just speak for him. He's on his way. <laughs> and I remember him coming back. 
I don't know who it is that works for you, but they're very rude. <laughs> oh, that was bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, John Ball, I was talking to John Ball, he lives in Canada now, right. and he used to pick the papers up for you from the station, uh, didn't he, and bring them down for you. Uh, when when there's some papers we delivered to the junction station. No, I don't think so. No? No. No, no the papers used to come them days by train. Yeah. Then eventually they, it all changed until they all came from by road. And they used to drop them off well, outside on paper. Well I used to be home waiting for yeah. them, you know. Yeah. But uh, when they when they used to come by by train I, I remember it like the lads at Tootra some of the papers there weren't lads, they were men oh. in, my father, in my father's time. Uh, because a farm worker was only getting 29 and 6 OE them days. So he'd be happy to do a news round. Well, I remember that an uncle used to take papers, and you'll not believe this. He used to go to the junction station and pick a bag of papers up, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. He'd walk to Bridge Station. Get a train to Parable, get off the train at Parable and walk to top of, top of Common, you know, yeah. where the Catholic Church was. Yeah. Sell some papers there and then walk back from Parable to Bershka, yeah. delivering papers. All on the way back. And he got ten shillings. And he used to think, you need ten bucks for that. I'm telling you, what's the new one there? I thought, back because he got, got well paid. He was only away from eight o'clock till about one. Yeah. You know, three or four hours. Mm. And he was getting ten shillings. Ten shillings for that and twenty nine shillings a week. And he's twenty nine shillings for a week. For a week's wage, you know. Fair. And they used to used to wait for a job and you know, yeah, five or six bucks for just reimbursing. Yeah. I used to think that. They were well paid, no one they wanted jobs. Yeah, well, you know. How many things like that? 29 and 6 weeks. For a full week's work. Hard graft on a farm. Half past 6 in the morning, yeah. a farm worker. Yeah. Till it went dark. Uh, up till half past 5. Mm. Then if he was a if he was a horseman, uh, he got uh, two or six pence a week extra. Because he had to feed Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. He had to look after his yeah. horse as well, didn't he? And the bailiff, now my uncle Tom, my uncle, my uncle Tom, my uncle Jack, we were both farm, farm bailiffs. My uncle Jack had the one wood end just over New Lane Station. Oh, yeah. He had that. Uh, Jack Leatherbar is always talking about that uh, firm. Uh, Jack, Jack used to let live on the left hand side, didn't he? Uh, just going towards New Lane Station. Going towards New Lane he Station. He lived on the left, left yeah. Left, yeah. Left I, remember, side, I remember his mother. Yeah. I don't remember him, no. but I remember his mother. Yeah. All right. yeah. Ed Gilly and uh, Ed Gilly married Ruth Lee. Ruth, yeah. Yeah. They used to live just over its station, yeah. right on side. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, well, I forgot what I was saying there, talking about something. We were talking about the paper deliveries and the um, the farming like farmhands that used to come and deliver them for you. And oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he got, farm bailiff got 35 shillings to it. But he's responsible for the farm, you know, everything growing, putting the crops in, harvesting, rotations. Food but he got the house roaming, mm. and then he had all the perks, you know. All the uh, food you want. Well, like, <laughs> fed his ends with the dirt corn and right. all that. All right. So, they weren't so bad. Compared, compared to the other lads, but, you know. Uh, it's still a full week's work. Yeah. Uh, well, when you think that over at Bridge now, where, where Pally Buildings were, how did that change? Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you something. Go on. I bet you're panned, unless you've been told this lately. Yeah. But you can't tell me, has there ever been an indoor market in Verska? Uh, yes, there has. Where? In the Pally Building. Who taught it? Uh, <laughs> Ernest Rosebottom's book. 
<laughs> it's in Ernest Rosebottom's book. Is it in that? About the Pally Buildings. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. It, it's a lovely, lovely book about yeah. Burst. I've got it, was it? Yeah. I don't remember. But, uh, The garage was in front. Yeah. That was uh, New Walls. New Walls, yeah. yeah. And behind it was a, it was a pal. Well, that's why it was called Paladin Dance Building, because mm -hmm. I knew the chap. He lived round Leyden, and they used to have dances there. Yeah. And then he packed up, and uh, it was open for us just a short time as an indoor market. As an indoor market. And then it, uh, it packed it up. Didn't last long. No, it, no. only for. Uh, now the firm is, apparently the firm has come and used it for a very, very short time. Uh, then you got on the corner, there was a, there was a plumber shop. Forest. Yeah, yeah. And then, I think Jack Eden had the shop yeah, next. Jack Eden had the yeah. next one, yeah. Next one. And then there was a load of shops after that. Yeah. Uh, the, like there was that uh, paint shop. Tom Ashcroft. And then there's Yeah, some, that some, went to tires, didn't yeah. it? But before that, in the corner there used to be a, a toffee shop. Webbers. Well before Webbers. Oh I don't I don't I've got it. Somebody really from Black I think a chap from Blackburn had it. From Blackburn. It was that earlier. Mm. And it had been a, a bike shop. Well the the toffee shop had? No, further on there further on. It'd been a bike shop. Uh a dress shop, and it's been a, a chip shop. And it's a chip shop now. Brown's had it, do you remember? Brown's, Brown's oh, I remember Brown's. Ah, yeah. Brown's had it. Yeah. Uh, we used to come back last train from uh, South up from dancing at Floral and calling there. He always well, stayed open for us. Yeah, but on the, I remember uh, the chip shop being, there was old decorlets. And then next door to the car, so the chip shop. Yeah. Uh, been opened a few times. It, you know Bill Pye, but he used to be snooker player. Aye. His his parents had it all one time for yeah. a short time. Yeah. Uh, and then Katie Ball, and she was always always were at there. Katie. Uh, fishing chip. Yeah. I've seen them there on Saturday night. Yeah. Halfway up the bridge. Oh yeah. Queuing for fish and chips. Yeah. Fish yeah. and chips rims. Oh. <laughs> there, there was there was big queues. And they and they were and they were fish and chips. Mm -hmm. They were volley. Because I've heard many of them, like I make my own food like fish and chips. Yeah. Right? Well, I had to do once of making batter, but there's too much mess in. I I do, usually do the fishing in breadcrumbs. Yeah. And I said, somebody was asking me about it. Do you, do you do, they're saying, do you have fish and shit? I said, yeah. Do you buy it? I said, no, do I? I buy it. I make my own. He said, and do you make battered fish? I said, I have done. I said, but it's too much messing. I said, you've got to have your fat that hot. Right. I said, uh, Bill Easter had, had the fish and chips shop there. And Katie used to make fish and chips. Mm -hmm. Well, Billy, Billy Eastwood, Billy Eastwood's down, 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 just down from where your shop was. The amount of people that used to, every day, they'd go with a bowl with a cloth over it. Right. Bowl you, and cloth over it. Did you used to do that, really? Well. Do you remember Florrie Deakin, Marion Dick Woods? Hi. She used to walk down there. Every day, uh, every day Florrie used to come uh, up. I and that was a big ball because, like, there was Brian, there was David, yeah. there was Dick, you know. And these also Good Friday, they also used to sell fresh fish. Really? Yeah. This one's dead, yeah. Just on, on Good Friday. Just on Good Friday? Yeah. Don't remember them selling it then. No? We used to sell tripe. Oh, I always have tripe. tripe. Yeah, yeah. 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 And what more littler at the other chip shop? Yeah. He used to always sell tripe. Yeah. And more littler, uh, was a bit of a relation of, of my yeah. parents, uh, yeah. Annie Forrest. Uh -huh. uh, old Arthur Forrest used to be a councillor, and uh, that was your 
uh, granddad. Would no, be it no. was me. My grandmother was a half sister. Yeah. To, uh, you know, my little. Yes. My subtle. Yeah. Well, her mother was. Uh, Vashti Wilson Price. Uh -huh. And her brother was Adriel Wilson Price. Well, uh -huh. Lady Price, you remember? Lady Price, yeah, yeah. Well, my grandmother was their stepsister. Uh, her father died and married Violet Liz Bandler. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, it's a right name, that, isn't it? Oh, aye. One of those brides, isn't it? Oh, there's some grand names. <coughs> there's some I, grand I names around. I remember that. Uh, you'll, not, you'll not remember this, I know. When I was a lad, they used to... Just going back a bit. There used to be an old chap living down Moss Lane, Dick Disley. He used to wear a swallow tail coat. And he used to back horses, he used to come in that. Sixpence winner. And I used to go along for him. I used to stand them actually. And uh, <laughs> and uh, old, old Dick used to say to me, Bargain, that, that'd be a rich fellow one day. And the, uh, John heard, heard him saying this, and one day she said, what does he mean this? You'll be rich one day. I said, I'll tell you. I said, going back a long time, the part of the family that went to Australia, and they, they were in gold, and they were worth uh, billions, not millions. And I, I believe they said that they owned Garswood Colliery, really wealthy, and they got all these families in Virginia clubbed together and they used to pay a solicitor to try and sort this thing down. But she'd all gone into Chancery. Well, once money gets into Chancery, to, to get it out, it's like, like trying to get money out of government. Like, <laughs> It's like, it's like asking Cameron for something. And they, kept, it, they kept on paying this sixpence. You know, they never got nothing. No. I said, and that's where he thinks all this money's going to come from. You know, I said, I the only money that I'll be rich with. Really, what what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, yeah. yeah, and then like you know, you said about them coming in for betting. Who was? Who was the bookie in the village? In them well, in, the, in them days, where I lived in Smithy Walk, Billy Pye's parents lived at the end house. Right. And uh, he was the bookie. And there used to be a chap called Daddy Dapper. Lived down there. He used to be, they used to go to race courses and they used to be the runner for him. Yeah. Uh, and then Bill did it, and Arthur Bridge, he was another bookie down there, uh, Briars Lane. Yeah. You know that? There are a big row of houses. It's, it blocked off now, I think it's dead end to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, where you go at the old mill. Uh, yeah. By the old mill. The old mill cottages. Well, they lived the first house, and his father was a bookie, and, and he did. Uh, yeah, I, re I remember. Arthur, I remember that bridge being there. Yeah, Arthur Bridge. Yeah. And then I tell you, also opened the book in. Busy Lion. You should call him Busy. Was that Emma Cotton? Emma Her Cotton's. Husband. Her husband. Yeah, they, he started that. Oral Lane. Down. Mark Lane. Shop down Mark Lane. Shop down Mark Lane. On the left hand. Yeah. Put the use of them days there. It was against the law. Oh right? yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's one yeah. reason I was saying you were old policemen. They used to get onto them, you know. They were hanging about. So virtually, there was like a bookie on every corner. Yeah, and but they used to the be, police came. Well, they used to go runners. Aye, yeah. Aye. If the police came, then they run. Oh. Everybody hide. <laughs> okay.